Mr. Does Report. any other member wish to speak? You wish to speak on the amendment? Yes. Ms. Stansbury is recognized for five minutes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just quickly before I speak on the amendment, I do want to address the assertions that were just made about this report and the receipts that have been provided about the funding that came into various properties and businesses owned by Donald Trump while he was president. Um, to address the inaccuracy put forward by Mr. Timmons, if you go to the source material, which is the actual receipts from Trump International Hotel, other hotels in New York, yes, there are condo fees. Um, there's a number of different businesses, but it's very clear that there was influence peddling going on. So, for example, there's receipts. Will the gentlelady yield? No. Uh, there are receipts that show the Malaysian government between September 10th and 13th was spending $10,000 a night, butler service, personal trainers, lavish meals, at the same time that they were meeting with Donald Trump and the media reports from the time say that they discussed their stay at Trump's hotel in the Oval Office. So this is just not true. Um, another one, UAE, uh, during a military delegation visit in March of 2018, they were negotiating a, uh, a arms package with the, uh, with, with the White House at the time. Okay. They dropped $85,000 at Trump Hotel and were discussing their stay at the hotel while they were negotiating the arms package. Uh, the Saudi Crown Prince and his staff dropped tens of thousands of dollars in Trump's hotel while uh, Trump was uh, in office. They were not only negotiating an arms deal, they were seeking the Iranian deal or the Iranian uh, agreements under the previous administration to be overturned. And we know that months after Trump and Kushner left the Oval Office, the MBS uh, committed $2 billion to Kushner against the advice of his own um, investment uh, uh, advisors. And we know that in Kazakhstan, we had Kazakh uh, president who came and stayed again in Trump's New York uh, and DC properties um, while there was these very nefarious activities going on. So I would encourage our colleagues to actually look at the receipts and then go look at the dates and what was actually happening in, in the media. It's very clear that whether or not Trump encouraged them to stay in his hotels or properties or these foreign governments stayed in them and then told Trump and his son-in-law they were seeking influence by staying at his property and thus were trying to bribe him, which is a violation of the Emoluments Clause of the United States Constitution. So let's move back to the amendment here just for a moment. I do want to just establish a little bit of a timeline. Um, and Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, I'd like to just ask some clarifying questions on the timeline. It's my understanding that in February of last year that you transmitted a letter to Biden, uh, Biden's attorneys uh, seeking documents and communications from the investigation. Is that correct? I'll, I'll go ahead and answer on your behalf because we have the we have the records for that um, if it's not immediately or at your hands. Our understanding from um, from the witness is that uh, that the chairman and his staff never responded to that request. In fact, they didn't hear back until or they didn't hear another thing until seven months later when in September, Mr. Comer, uh, you appeared on a TV news station on Newsmax and said, quote, Hunter Biden is more than welcome to come in front of the committee if he wants to clear his good name, if he wants to come and say, you know, uh, that these weren't his dealings, then he could come and clear his name. And so literally the next day on September 13th, Biden's attorney responded and wrote you back and said, do you never responded to our offer? I'll come in, I'll come do a public testimony. A couple months later, after the impeachment hearing that just completely fell apart, Chairman, you went on the Benny show and you extended another offer to Hunter Biden to come testify in front of the American people under oath. And yet again, when Biden's attorney transmitted a letter offering to do so, instead you issued a subpoena to do a closed door deposition. It's it's just very odd, right? Like here we are, there's been a lot of yelling today. I think we're all getting real tired of all of this, but the reality is is that Hunter Biden has even today showed up in front of the committee ready to testify under oath. 
So, you know, like, let's be real. And I think the reality is, is that of all of these tens of thousands of documents that have been provided to the majority in their investigation, none of them have actually shown any wrongdoing by the president. And so it's easier to create a smoke screen to keep this narrative in the media and to peddle in disinformation. Behind Time's expired. Doors. And there's so many inaccuracies with your statement. We don't have time to 